This 32GB kit of A-Data RAM used to be my workhorse. I used to get these at £95 a pop. Now they are well over £300. But everybody knows that RAM's expensive and there's not going to be any utility in me going over that again. So in today's video I'm going to show you some ways to try and offset the price of the increased RAM, some strategies going forward, how long I think it's going to last and what I think is going to happen to all these other components. And why would I know anything? Well I've been building PCs for five years under my own company and I was there during the great GPU shortage begging my suppliers to give me GPUs so I've learned a thing or two. What I don't want to do is scaremonger. If you've noticed on YouTube there's so many videos out there all saying the same thing about RAM and how bad it is. They're not adding value. The reason they're doing it is because you click on the videos. I reckon these YouTubers that are making these videos have never had so much traffic on their channels before. So whilst they complain in the videos, they're probably laughing their way to the bank in ad revenue. So it's not useful for me to do that because one, I've only got 5k subscribers, so it's probably going to get me about £5 for this video in AdSense. And two, I just don't like that. I'd rather just do something nice. So let's learn how we can offset some of these costs and make the right buying decision for you. So let's start with the actual RAM. How can you get this cheaper? Uh, you can't. You can buy used RAM, you can stick with a DDR4 system, or you could just not buy any RAM at all if your PC is already fine. What I think is going to happen very soon, and actually it's already started happening, is we're going to go into a bundle market. So you're not really going to be able to get just memory on its own. You're going to have to buy a motherboard, CPU and other bits. And the reason is that one, it's an anti-scalper method because the scalpers aren't going to want all the other stuff. And two, it's a way for these retailers to offload a load of stock that they don't want to keep anymore. But that could be to your advantage if you do actually need to build a whole new system. Look out for those bundles because they might be the cheapest way for you to get into PC gaming if you really need an upgrade. But expecting there to be any kind of sale price on RAM in the next probably year, you're absolutely dreaming. Maybe you get lucky with an Amazon miss price at some point, but I really doubt it. So you're better off thinking tactically, go for the bundles if you want them, or just sink the cost. In terms of the price, I don't think it's going to go much higher. I think probably we're going to get another 10 to 20% on top of the current price. That's just based on what I'm seeing in the pre-retail channels. Um, but we'll have to see. We don't know until we actually get there. And me telling you a load of stuff that might happen isn't that useful. Where can we save money elsewhere in our build in order to offset the price of the RAM if indeed you definitely need to buy some? Well, let's talk about the good things because there are some good things. CPUs are pretty cheap now. Um, I can get a Ryzen 7800X 3D spot price for around £290 now. I think that's really good value. CPUs are probably going to go up very soon. So don't buy them when they go up because I think they're going to come crashing down around February when they realise that nobody's going to be building computers because of the RAM. So all the other components in the system might actually get a huge discount around February. I'm not saying it will happen, but it's something to look out for. The other part of the system that people are interested in is GPU. So these are going to go up in price because they use RAM, don't they? Obviously, guys. But it might not be as bad as you think. 20, 30 maybe 80 quid to 100 quid, depending on the model. The GPUs are already going up in price. I got this one for 300 quid, it's now 330, so go figure. The best time to buy a GPU was about four weeks ago, but that doesn't help you if you haven't already got one. But it's not like the CPUs, because these are useful for things besides gaming, so you're probably not gonna see huge discounts on these going forward. So if you find a good price that's near the RRP or MSRP, should probably just get it, as long as you can justify the rest of the system. But for some really positive news, cooling, I don't think it's ever been cheaper for really good coolers. Like this Arctic, probably considered one of the best on the market at the moment. This is like £75 for a really high class 3 fan AIO that cools your VRM. And if you look for thermal right, you can get them for like dirt cheap. 45 quid for a, a dual fan liquid cooler is utterly insane. Tower air coolers are also really cheap. So maybe you were considering something like an NZXT Kraken with an LCD screen on it. Maybe instead you should get something like Thermal Right because the quality is still going to be there. You're just maybe not going to get that LCD screen and brand recognition. But whatever. Motherboards are in a really good spot actually. You get some really good value now. For around 120 to 140 on an AM5 platform, you can get a really nice motherboard with an excellent VRM, nice looks, and an M2 storage, everything you really need. So motherboards are priced really well. If you're really trying to save money, I think these are going to go real cheap around February. 
I think the motherboards are going to really r drop in price dramatically because there's not going to be any other use for them if people aren't buy building systems because of the RAM problem. So maybe the smart play, guys, is to buy the RAM now, even though it's inflated, and then wait for the other parts to come down in price. Who knows? Maybe you want to buy some RAM with extended holiday returns until February the 1st, and maybe if the price comes down on said RAM by then, you can return the original kit that you bought. I didn't tell you that, did I? I didn't tell you to do that at all. So motherboards are in a great spot. Storage. This is the other thing that is a bit difficult in the market, and it has gone up really quickly at the same pace as the RAM, but the overall price increase isn't as bad. And there is a little tactic you can use to try and find the drives that are lower price. For example, Samsung 990 Pro, really nice SSD. Fast, DRAM, great. But I did say DRAM, didn't I? DRAM SSDs are going to be well expensive. These are going to go up way more than the others. So most people, especially gamers, don't need DRAM on their, seat, on their SSD. Maybe if you're a content creator, it's useful. But maybe you just want to get a good drive with decent speed, but with host memory buffer instead. Even this Bywin NV7200, great. So avoid the DRAM buffered SSDs because they're going to be really expensive, but you can still get some all right deals. A two terabyte HMB drive has gone from around 105 pounds up to 140. So overall, the total amount out of the whole build is definitely up by a lot, but it's not that bad. Now we already spoke about video cards, but maybe this is time that you consider switching from maybe Nvidia to either AMD or Intel. I've tested so many cards now, I find that B580 is really, really nice, guys. For 1440p, this will do the job for a pretty low price, and it's got the 12 gigabytes. If you want something a little bit more mainstream, then you've got the uh, 9060 XT 16 gig. The RTX 5070 is also a decent price, um, but I have noticed the 5080s are going up in price, definitely. And the 5090s, I don't really even consider those gaming cards anymore. Um, they're more like production cards and industry cards that will also do gaming to a high standard. And then power supplies are in a great spot for pricing at the moment. So something like a PL750D is a bit of a workhorse for my lower end builds, um, even up to the mid-range actually. 750 watt bronze, ATX 3.1, cybernetic silver rated, pretty reliable, I've never had one break, pretty nice. And I get these for like 45 quid. But there's also you know, lots of 850 watt golds from Montec and Corsair going for under £90 at the moment. So power supplies are in a good spot as well. And finally, you want to put all these components into something. And luckily, the case market is fantastic. So many cheap cases with good build quality, reliability and features. We've looked at them on the channel. Deepcool CH260 is like 50 quid. There's another Deepcool, I can see it in the corner of my eye, which is a Deepcool fish tank case down there for like 60 quid. There's lots of good budget options now, and with the cases, it's more the layout and the shape that's important. The build quality is kind of important, but doesn't matter that much when you're trying to save money in a market like this. But what's the point of me telling you about all these other parts when the RAM is the problem? Well, if you add up all the cost savings that you get on the other components, the increase in the RAM maybe doesn't seem quite as bad. It's still bad, guys. I'm not saying that RAM's not bad, but it's a bit better. Let's say, Six months ago, a nice motherboard like this would have been maybe 40 quid more expensive. Nice power supplies, another 10, so you're up to 50 already. GPUs, even despite the recent price increases, you're probably saving a good 10 or 20 quid on those. Cases, you're probably saving 10 or 20 quid there as well. So what was like a £250 increase in your cost has now come down to 150 And if you're on a higher end build, actually as a component of the full build, you may be looking at an extra 5 to 10% in cost. So it's up to you whether that's worth it. I'm not here to tell you that you should buy something or not, but just consider the total cost of the build and try not to get whipped up in the frenzy. There's two sets of people I really feel for in this RAM market, and that is the creative professionals who actually need the RAM. They actually need a lot of RAM. Gamers don't actually need really more than 32, but I do feel sorry for those video editors that need an upgraded rig because it's really, really tough for them on those high density kits. And I also feel really bad for the guys at the entry level of the market as well, because a few weeks ago, you could just about squeeze somebody into AM5 who's on a more tight budget. But now that's just not possible. And that, that's who, that's the people that are affected most by this. And those are the people I feel the worst for. And for those people, 
I don't have that many suggestions to be honest. Either stick with whatever you're currently gaming on, or just consider a DDR4 system. You can still get really good performance out of a Ryzen AM4 platform or something like an Intel 12400F, whatever's cheaper in your region. So yeah, those are the two people I feel really bad for. A lot of the higher end gamers, you might actually get away with it without being too bad. And don't forget, while we're talking about gaming PCs here, they are absolutely a luxury, especially if you've already got a system that works. So this might be the time that you consider, and I shouldn't say this as somebody that owns a PC company, but maybe you should consider something that's not to do with your gaming PC. Maybe you should, this is a really good opportunity for you to improve your life in another way. Maybe you could get that gym membership, get yourself in shape. You know, for me, getting to the gym has absolutely changed my life for the better, and I'd recommend it to anyone even if it means you don't buy a computer from me. Maybe you go down to a thrift shop and you pick up a cheap acoustic guitar and you learn how to play the guitar. I mean, these are gonna impact your life actually arguably in a better way than the gaming stuff. So maybe you just wanna reframe this and think elsewhere. Don't worry too much about the scaremongering about everything else. These things go in cycles. Eventually this will all just normalize again and it will be fine. So the goal of this video was just to try and reframe things a little bit, right? This is bad. The RAM situation is really bad. I've never seen anything quite like it in terms of how rapid the prices have gone up, and it does affect people on the low end the most, which absolutely sucks. But crying about it online isn't going to change anything. It's not going to reverse the deals that OpenAI's done. It's not going to change anything. So why don't we reframe, refocus, maybe go to a different part of our life, maybe we want to improve that, maybe we take advantage of some of the advice we've had here about some of the other cheap components, maybe you look out for those bundles that we talked about at the start. Either way, let's try to keep things positive and keep moving forward because complaining is going to get us nowhere. You know what? I've just hit 5,000 subscribers, my business has had probably the best quarter it's had in years, uh, so be the change you want to see. I'm going to give away some DDR5 RAM. It's only going to be 16 gigs, but it would be enough to get you a system going on DDR5 and help you ride out some of the worst of this rampocalypse. I'm going to give it away on a live stream. I have a live stream this Saturday and next Saturday. I'll be giving it away next Saturday, but you will earn loyalty points by watching the stream and chatting on the stream as well. The more loyalty points you get, the more likely it is you're going to win the raffle. I do not want your money. Please do not donate. It will not give you any more entries. I just want to do something nice for the community. This will be RAM that I've spent with my own company money. I'm not getting this for free from anyone. I'm giving it to you. Now think of all those big tech YouTubers making scary RAMpocalypse videos. Don't see them giving away their RAM and they get their RAM for free. So just think about that for a minute. That's all I'm going to say. All right. See ya. And I put this at the end of the video so that the loyal viewers of the channel that tend to watch the whole video are going to get the inside scoop.